Hello and welcome to the Court Case Podcast with your hosts James Court and Sweet T Yates. On today's episode we're going to be joined by the mystery host of the Quips and Dips podcast. We're going to be talking to her about toxic relationships, we're going to get her in on some courting with James and much more. If you want to get in on the action and suggest a topic for us, please follow us on our Instagram at Court Case Podcast. But anyway, on with the show right after this. Okay, happy Friday, everybody. We're joined by um, Sweet Tea. And, Hello. <laughs> and the mystery host of the Quips and Dips podcast. Hello. How how are you doing? It's nice to meet you first. It is so nice to meet you. I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I'm a little tired. You woke me up so early in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> it's not even that early. I'm being extra. <laughs> That's the thing, though. We're, we're, most of our collaborations have been with um, people from across the seas. So we always have to deal with the time zone thing. Where in America are you sort of? What coast are you on? I'm on the East Coast in New Jersey. Oh, nice. So five hours behind. Yeah. Yeah. That's oh, a, wow. What's it... Um, What's it like to live in New Jersey? Is it the only place you've ever lived in, in America? Um, I did live in West Virginia for college, which was a definite culture shock. It's very different from New Jersey. Um, New Jersey is a weird state, though, because you can have like every kind of climate and like earthy texture. And like there's urban places, there's suburban places, there's farmland. There's it's like such a weird state. You would, my friends who visited from West Virginia went into South Jersey where there's a lot of gardens and farms and things like that. And they're like, it feels like we're in West Virginia. What is that? And I'm like, (laughs) I don't know, man. (laughs) That's great. Is it, um, is it true that like New Yorkers don't like people from New Jersey? Um, that is a thousand percent true. I don't really know like why, because we're so similar. Like there, like especially the area where I'm from, um, I would say that you wouldn't really tell a big difference between somebody from here and somebody from like Staten Island, where my boyfriend is from. Yeah. And like they're not that different. And Staten Island is kind of like this forgotten borough of New York. Yeah. Like yeah. it's not like the rest of the city. It's very much just a regular old town or it's like a really big city, but like it's pretty regular. It's just just got houses. It's not like brownstones everywhere and urban life. It's very different there. But my boyfriend's family love to like point out that I'm from New Jersey. <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> we're the same. We're the same. That's so funny. Oh, God. <laughs> we got some good stories today that we want to get to. We want to talk about your podcast and stuff. And we got some caught in with James because uh, obviously you like to cover some relationship stuff on your podcast. And sure um, do. we love to as well. It's one of our most popular things that we chat about. How long have you been familiar with like us? Um, well, pretty much when I started podcasting is when I learned about everybody's podcast. So I yeah. would say I found you guys. You were one of the first ones that I found. Um, back in January, which was not that long ago, it was last month. But I I started January, I think, fourth or like January first, like on New Year's Day, I was sitting there like, all right, I'm doing it. So I probably found you that first week of January. Yeah, you're doing uh, really well for starting January, like you've hit like 1k followers already. Yeah, I feel like I don't get as much like, interaction, though, like, I feel like so many people who follow me are like, let me promote your podcast for $20 million if you have oh, it lying around. <laughs> we get that all the time. <laughs> Every day. Or it's like, can I make you a graphic? I'm like, are you insulting my work? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but like, um, so your podcast is, a, the way yours is a bit different than some of the other ones we listen to is that you're a mystery host. You don't say like who you are and stuff like that. So is there like a reason for that? Is I guess it's because I'm not a big fan of social media mm. and even my personal social media, there's nothing personal on it. Right. Um, I was saying the other day on another show that there are still guys like that I knew in high school that will like hit me up and be like, hey, you're really cute. You know, you're, you're looking good these days. And I'm like, Oh, you know, I appreciate it. I do have a boyfriend. They don't know that, though. Like, yeah. there's nothing on my profile that would lead you to believe that I have a boyfriend. Yeah. Um, I'm just not very public with anything. So my my social media is all my business because I'm a freelance artist, makeup artist. So all of my social media is just makeup. So there's nothing cool. personal on it at all. And my Facebook account, I pretty much use it to share memes. <laughs> I yeah. don't do anything on it. <laughs> so I don't. I'm not a personal person, but I do have a lot of really interesting 
or I think they're interesting personal experiences. I've had a lot of life experience. And so I wanted to share that, but I did want to keep it anonymous. I didn't want to have to share it on my personals so that in the event that somebody I do know does happen to listen to it, maybe they won't know it's me. Um, I try to change the names up a bit so that it's like weird, but um, that's pretty much it. I just wanted to be, I wanted to be able to share freely and openly without having to worry about people from my hometown or whatever and pressure. Yeah. yeah, I love that. So it just proves that you can do what you love without having to be like public about it and showing off about it. Yeah. Yeah. It it makes your um your gain in following a bit more impressive because I guess you haven't been able to rely on asking friends and family to follow and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> you just built it yourself. Uh, I no, I have not asked anybody in my friends and family to follow. Um I mean, I'll let you guys, I'll tell the secret because a lot of people ask me, they're like, how do you do it? It's not impressive. And it has everything to do with the fact that I have no life and a lot of time. So (laughs) um, when I worked, when I started working, trying to build a social media presence with my podcast, first, I had to research like hashtags. What are the best hashtag buzzwords for a podcast? So I, I've noticed that other podcasters are my audience. I don't get a lot of non-podcasting people uh, as my audience or people that talk to me. It's always another podcaster. So first I started to follow like as many podcasts as possible. And usually they follow you back. Most podcasters, especially small podcasts, like not verified or like not celebrities or whatever, they'll follow you back because they want you to engage with their show as well. Um, So I've done that. But I also do this thing where like every day or every couple of days I'll go on and I'll follow, I'll go to like, like, let's say I went to your profile. I'll go to whoever follows you and I'll start following like 10 or 15 of them. And a few of them will follow me. The hashtags do work though, because I do wake up almost every day with a lot of non people. I don't follow back following me. So it's not somebody that I follow to get their follow. Yeah. And then I, I use an app. Um, every couple of days I did have to pay for it. It's not expensive, but I did use an app that basically I unfollow anybody who didn't follow me back after a couple of days. Yeah. Yeah. Got you. So I keep the ratio tighter. People tend to be, I guess, like more judgmental if your ratio is super wide. So if I follow 10,000 people and I have 2000 followers, it doesn't look as good as if I have about equal, or even if more people follow me than I follow. 100%. 100%. Yeah, I've been doing literally the exact same as that as well. So bang on. Yeah. Well, you... I used to do it without an app. I used to do it like going through each follower to find who doesn't follow me back. But I started to get <laughs> so many. And I was like, I how do I need You're, something. I'm losing track. <laughs> I'm losing track. So I did pay for an app to do it for me. I mass unfollow every single like not every day, but like every other day or so it depends on my mood. Yeah. Um, and it has helped. It has. I have officially reached more followers than my personal account. <laughs> you um, you said you're a freelance makeup artist. How long have you been doing that for? Um. So I actually started right before COVID. I opened my business to the world and then the world said, mm, no, we're going <laughs> to shut down now. <laughs> oh, So really, I haven't gotten like too many clients too into it. Like a lot of I haven't had a lot of experience over the last year, unfortunately, like, you know, it's been hurting as far as business. But I did take the time during quarantine to really focus on learning different techniques, working with different skin tones, eye color, eye shapes, face shapes, like trying to make sure that I do the best job possible when it comes to um, being a makeup artist, taking classes, um, just anything I can do. I've been reaching out to artists to like assist them so that I can like see what it's like on the job. Um, I did, I did book a client. I have her, I'm actually supposed to see her tomorrow, but she didn't even give me her address or a time. So I'm wondering like when this is supposed to happen, but I'm booked for her (laughs) wedding next month. So, oh gosh. Wow. So do you have, um, do you have like an end game, like a career goal for the makeup artist in? What I would like to do is I would like to be able to afford. So I'm older. I went to college. I did the thing um, and I didn't really find anything fruitful out of it. So I would like to go back to like a cosmetology or makeup school or maybe get an esthetician's license, whatever kind of is like the cheapest option. Um, But what I would really like to do is work in like fashion and editorial makeup 
in the city. Mm. I oh, love special so effects. Cool. I would love to do special effects, but really yeah. the only place to do that is way out in California. And I have no plans to move so far across the country. Um, you know, like I have a life here. So I just, I don't, I don't want to move to California, but I would really love to do like anything on like TV, fashion, photo shoots, things in the city like that. That's what I would like to do. And I'd like to do it sustainably as a career. Yeah, cool. That'd be so cool. Mm. I love it that. would be. <laughs> but, yeah, it's it seems that everything like that is is in California though, isn't it? But California's just so expensive. Like I mean, is it more expensive than New York? I don't even know. Like <laughs> I know it is outrageously expensive to live here, hmm. even in New Jersey, which is not New York, but because especially where I live, I'm pretty close to the city. It's probably like a half hour drive, maybe like a 40 minute train. Um it's close and the it, it shows the closer you get to the city the more exp expensive the prices are um and california like i don't know i just have no desire for that like influencer culture that's out yeah. there where they like i don't know if you guys are on tiktok but i always see them doing like tiktoks in the middle of the street in la and they're like blocking traffic just for like the aesthetic and i'm like <laughs> wow i really fucking hate you am i like a curse on this yeah, show i'm are. so sorry yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I swear away I, fuck, I <laughs> fucking hate them as well. Now. <laughs> so we're here in England, we're currently on a lockdown. We're stuck in our houses. That's why T is not with me in in my little studio. What what, what is it like in Corona wise? Was it like in New Jersey? So actually, I was actually talking about you guys the other day to my boyfriend. I was like, did you know that in England, they take this shit super serious? Like they're a couple and they don't even like you guys don't are not even hanging out. Are you or do you hang out? We um... oh, we hang out like we can go on like an hour walk. But that's like, oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like that's wild to me. So the I'm lucky because my parents work from home. We both live with our parents. I should right. preface with that. Um, my parents work from home and his parents aren't really, they're not working anymore. They're retired, but they're also very home bodied people. So we don't have to worry about like mixing between us because we're always home. Yeah. We're yeah. In, in constant quarantine. So we don't really have to worry about it, but I see a lot of other people just kind of ignoring those factors. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I know I have like a mix with here, like, you see a lot of people still going out. I like I one of my friends where I used to work, um, him and his girlfriend are always out eating, always out at bars. And I'm just like, it's it's not on full lockdown here anymore. They like really couldn't contain the United States, especially like the more, you know, like conservative states who really feel like their rights are being infringed upon by trying to protect people. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I personally take the virus seriously. Me and my family take it seriously, but not everybody does that. And it's kind of weird here. You kind of have to walk on eggshells with who you talk to and what you say because they get like offended. And yeah. it's a very, it's a very strange time. And in New Jersey, it's a very mixed bag of people. Okay. Well, I mean, it sounds a little bit better than what we've got at the moment, to be fair. I like it. Like, I think there's going to be a mental health crisis here in England, to be honest with you, because we've had this for like two months. We've just been stuck in our own houses and possibly another month on top of that as well. And we it's... were strict at the beginning, yeah. like we uh, from like March to May, June ish. We were really strict. Yeah. I mean, in New Jersey, like nothing was open you couldn't go anywhere you couldn't do anything and then once everything opened up again we it felt like so crazy and i don't get me wrong i did indulge and i did go out i did go to like outside bars or like they were used to, in the summertime or like late early fall there were these like they would shut down the street in this town where we go to like all the bars and yeah you could like sit outside with your friends enjoy live music it was actually quite nice yeah um but it just got out of hand. I know that in Staten Island, they just reopened their restaurants. They were closed for a while. Right. Damn. I Damn. mean, over here, we did a thing in like October time, like eat out to help out, yeah. where they did like 50% off at all restaurants and encouraging people to go out because obviously all these places weren't getting much money. And then we went straight back into a lockdown like after a month of doing that because the cases increased. I wonder why. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's just, it's so difficult because you, it's it, you, it's a real tightrope between like, do you risk 
people's lives from corona or do you risk people's livelihoods because the businesses aren't open and no one's earning money it's difficult uh, it just seems like a lot of businesses haven't thought of other ways to work around it yeah a lot of business here businesses here do a lot of to-go stuff which i think people are doing still because they were trapped in their houses for so long cooking every single day i think like i i don't eat out i try not to eat out because i you don't want to gain like a million pounds but like I try to support like the local businesses if I can, but it's not yeah. easy. No. no, it's not. No, it's not. But on to podcast stuff. So you are the Quips and Dips podcast. Do you want to uh, tell us a bit about like the main idea of what your podcast is to like our listeners? Yeah, so I, I didn't think I really intended it to be a comedy podcast, but I feel right. like it kind of is um, just because that's who I am. I'm just like very like quippy which is where mm. the name came from and i just come up with these like one-liners where i just i say something i think i'm funny some <laughs> other people think i'm funny too <laughs> but no it's not for everybody but yeah i talk about random topics anything that's on my my brain i get really obsessed with random things um every once in a while and mm. so you'll see that in my episodes and i try to like let you know what the episode is about so that you can decide like my favorite episodes are probably the least watched or I'm at least listen to episodes on right. my show. Yeah. yeah. But I don't care because it is my show and I just want to talk about the things that I want to talk about. But um, I talk a lot about like relationships and life experiences. That's probably the main part of the show. But I try to make everything very light and funny. I'm not really into um, like dark or like deep existential crisis. And yeah. I just want you to have fun when you listen to my show. It is my safe and happy place. So that's what it is. Yeah. I love that. It's I... a good name as well. It works well. Mm. Thanks. Nice. It took so I went through probably 200 names before <laughs> I landed. Well, you you picked a good one. And I listened to your unpop your latest one, the unpopular opinions one this morning. I really liked that one. That was a good topic. I'm surprised we haven't done one on that yet. Yeah, um, it's such a good one to do. We we do need to touch on that. Mm, but so, I, you sent me an unpopular opinion. Did you, the we did, the cat, right? Yes. Yes. Which one was it? <laughs> you said that. Um, who I don't know who sent it to me. Like which one of you? It, well, it? it's James's one, but I sent it. It was about um, uh, <laughs> he does he doesn't like house cats or something like that, no, no, wasn't no, no, it? No, no. Outdoor right. cats. You don't yeah, have out outdoor, outdoor cats. cats. I, I like the idea of house cats. I just don't understand why people would buy a pet that would then fuck <laughs> off. I don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> but... I don't think people buy outdoor cats, though. I think outdoor cats choose you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they just come into the garden one day and then. Yeah. Once your they're your cat, they're your cat. It's yeah. Done. <laughs> But um, so like what is you said your favorite ones are the least watched. What would you say is the fa your favorite topic that you've talked about on the on the show before? My favorite one was probably the Titanic episode, just because I like it's not a lie. That show, I've been obsessed with Titanic since I was a child. I yeah. don't know why. Um, I never cared about the love story. Like I Jack and Rose can fuck off for all I care. Yeah. All I wanted, like I was fat fascinated at the fact that this this ship like all the information surrounding it and then i went to belfast and i saw like the shipyard and i was like they don't talk about the sinking there at all yeah, yeah. they like talk about how great it was made and this shipyard and this that, and i'm like this is suspect you guys aren't even talking about the like thing that happened yeah. <laughs> but um there's like have you um heard about like the conspiracy theories regarding the titanic and stuff like that like what I, I haven't there's one that like one of the conspiracies is that it wasn't actually the titanic who was a sister ship that went out oh there yeah i heard that but the thing is with that one is like well where is the titanic then the actual one where yeah. is that <laughs> oh i don't know that's very mysterious they did like so from what i learned is like the Britannic, which was a, a sister ship of the Titanic. It also sank, but I don't feel like I see anything about it. Yeah. But when they were doing research on the ship, that's when they found out that something was changed on the Britannic that was slightly different, but it was supposed to be an identical ship. Right. It was supposed to be okay. exactly the same. And there was this like part of it that was slightly different that would have theoretically protected the Titanic from splitting in half. Yeah. So the idea is that Harlan and Wolf did know 
about the issue and didn't say anything to anybody. They just went and fixed it on the next ship because the Britannic was built just after the Titanic. Right. Oh, right. Okay. Okay. Have you um, heard about the Costa Concordia? Why does that sound? Is that the one that sunk by Italy? Yeah, that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a few years. That was like not that long ago. That was. It was in 2013 or 14. But a video on like the whole summary of all the events was trending on YouTube a couple days ago. And I watched it and it's so, the whole story is so fascinating because it was such a mess, like a complete mess. The whole, it was. Well, they were supposed to go on like a, for, I, this is a long time ago, but like mm. they were supposed to take a certain course and the captain was like, oh, fuck off. I'm going to get a sore destination yeah. so much earlier by going this <laughs> other way. And then he didn't know that there were all these fucking shallow places or whatever happened. Yeah. I don't even know. It you was supposed me. to basically <laughs> it was supposed to be a ship that was like the same size as the Titanic or bigger or something like that. This huge ship. It was going from Italy, I think, um like across to I don't remember where it was going, but basically they were cutting corners in costs a lot of the time. And the captain that steered the ship was actually a security guard. Like, it was his first ship that he'd ever gone on. He'd ever um, piloted himself. So they did what? not have a qualified person <laughs> doing it. And basically, he decided that there's this thing that you can do on a ship where you can sail in shallow waters just past the country that you just port from and, like, blow your horn. And it's, like, a symbolic thing that you can do. And so he was like, we're going to go We're gonna go out of port. We're going to go into the shallow waters. We're going to toot the horn. And then we're going to go off and carry back on. And so he goes to the shallow waters, has no idea how to pilot a ship, goes in too shallow, and it crashes just, like, literally only a few miles from where they set off. And, oh, my um, God. The whole and he, like, hopped off, too. He didn't even he did. stay to help anybody. He was gone. He didn't, really? He didn't stay <laughs> with the ship. He got in a um, helicopter and went off. And um, <laughs> also he was one of the reasons that he crashed was he was distracted because he was having an affair, an affair with one of the women that was on the ship there. Um, they had, oh, my God. They had two members in the piloting crew as well that didn't understand each other because they both spoke different languages. <sighs> so they couldn't communicate. So they had to communicate between a third party during an emergency <laughs> when they were trying to get this thing back on course. Oh my god, that is a mess. <laughs> yeah, and people ended up dying. There were people that ended up dying in this crash. Oh my and so, god, um, he that's did, not good. I think he ended up going to prison. But if if you can find it on YouTube, it's like twenty minutes, but it's fantastic. The whole I'm story. Glad we watched it is, that. It is a glorious mess. Oh my it's god, it's so great. No, I do find stuff like that interesting as well. But did um, you hear about the guy? I don't know if it was recent. I feel like we just came across it on Reddit. Mm. But there was a guy who was like in a boat that sank. And everyone, there was only, it was like a few of them. It was a small boat, um, like a fishing boat or a tugboat or something. And it sank and this guy lived in there for four days before he was found. Yes, I've heard about that. He's, he's And he was like the like only one. Air. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, how um, did he survive? The... There was like an air pocket. He was like in the toilet. Like, mm. so oh. he was like in the bathroom when the ship was sinking or whatever. And he was able to, like, you know when you take, like, a bucket underwater and it has, like, the air up top, like, you can stick your head inside of a canoe or whatever, like, when there's, I don't know how to, water displacement really works, I'm not a yeah. but <laughs> you know what I mean. And so he, like, basically kept his head above water like that, underwater, and they found him and he was there for four days and all his crewmates were dead and it was just him. Yeah. He must have been so hungry. Yeah, I know. Oh, my God. <laughs> Four yeah. days. Yeah. I couldn't think of it. <laughs> I'd want a Big Mac as soon as I get back on dry land. I would want the person rescuing me having a Big Mac in their hand ready. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I want to get on to one thing that I wanted to talk about today was um, toxic relationships because I saw you've had an episode where you've talked about that. And um, oh, yeah. we've Expert. not, yeah, we've not covered it uh, on our show in depth yeah have you had a had a lot of experience with toxic relationships and stuff do you have any oh yeah um i would say my very first like serious boyfriend was the most toxic in just every way mm. he was like really emotionally abusive and manipulative and it gave me like a crash course in toxic relationships and yeah. just oh wasted, my God. like five years of my youth <laughs> um yeah. and oh. i always joke around because I got gray hairs when I was like 20 years old and I would always joke around that like it was because of him <laughs> like yeah. he stressed me out so much 
Um, it was just so bad, literally from the beginning. And the only reason I stayed five years was because he was so good at manipulating. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You did you didn't like see it was happening. Or like I saw it, but I was afraid to he admit like, it. Made it. He made it seem like if I um uh, like left him that I'm so gross and disgusting that no one would ever want to be with me. Right. So I had oh, to just take what I can get. Oh, right. That's so uh, and I was like, yeah, you're right. That sounds <laughs> all oh checked out God. here. Oh, bless Christ. you. That's awful. I've um I've been in a couple toxic relationships, but luckily they've not been too long. I've managed to sort of spot the signs. <laughs> but um, I did have to call the police on one of my girlfriends once, which wasn't very fun. <laughs> Oh, tell the story. What happened? Well, we were on, uh, basically, we were on a night. Well, one of the, the first thing was, I was planning on breaking up with her that night anyway. And so. Wait, were you? Why did you decide to go to a nightclub yeah, was, then? Well, but, but it was a very spur of the moment thing. I was like, okay, this is very, <laughs> I, like, I was basically like, look, this is very toxic. I just want this off of my mind. I want to get this done tonight. I shouldn't have done. I should have waited until there wasn't alcohol involved or anything. Yeah. But, but you know, I was young. <laughs> what are you gonna do? Wait, what parts? What parts of the UK are you guys from? I want to get like an idea. Like, are you in like Geordie Shore territory? No. I don't oh, know. Oh God, no. <laughs> we are in. We are in the south of the UK. So think places like Portsmouth, Brighton, Southampton, South okay. near the coast on the bottom. So, oh, Southampton! Isn't that where the Titanic was? That was, that was, <laughs> and, yeah. and, and actually, small claim to fame. My dad was a builder, and he obviously not at the time the Titanic was around, but the hotel that everyone stayed in before they boarded the Titanic, he um, rebuilt and remodeled it. Very cool, very yeah. cool. Okay, continue on. I just wanted to get an idea because I feel like in my head, London nightlife is only in Essex and it exists no, no. nowhere else except no, no, London, no. Well, I guess. But... Th this particular story was in Southampton, actually. So I, I there we go. can say that because that's where I went to uni at. Nightlife there is really good and really cheap. But anyway, um, <laughs> I was um, going out with this girl. We'd only been going out for like a couple months, maybe two months or something like that. And I was like, this is a crap show from the beginning. And um, I want to, uh, you know, I need to break up with her tonight. And basically, we were at the um, we were at the club, I think, and I did break up with her then. And then I was basically, but I wasn't like a dick about it. I was like, you know, I, um, I'll i call you like a taxi. I'll make sure that you get home safe or something like that. Because she did drive to my student house. And I was like, you can't drive, you're pissed. I was like, I'll buy you like a taxi or whatever home. She wasn't having any of it. She just kept drinking more. So then I walked her back to mine. And I was like, I and two of my friends came with me. And I was like, I will um, order you a taxi from my house and I'll make sure you get home safe and my, uh, we can sort out your car in the morning. And um, she was not having any of that either. She was getting a bit like pushy and shovey and stuff, which wasn't very good. So I got one of my mates that was a girl to sit with her while I tried to figure out what the next plan was. But then she ran away from my girl girly friend and um she went to her own car with her keys and threatened to drive home drunk and i was like no and we couldn't get her out of the car and she and we had to get my other male mate to take the keys off her and then i was like there's no i i don't know what to do now so i ended up having to call the police and was like she's you know i don't want her to drink drive and she's like threatening to drink drive home what should i do <laughs> so um he um basically the policeman came and they calmed her down and they had her stay at my friend's house and then apparently she left in the morning or something and then i never saw her again <laughs> wow so, um yeah so. wild well i'm glad you never saw her again yeah. i gotta say the sidebar i like i'm obsessed like not obsessed because i really don't know anything about it but english accents i really think are like <laughs> So I studied linguistics. I went to school mm. to study linguistics, which is the science of language. My favorite part of the studies were the dialectology, like how dialects form in different places. You guys, to me, don't sound like you're from the same place, but are you? Well, yeah, yeah I'm about one village over. <laughs> I feel like you you have different accents, the two of you. Really? And I always I always think about it like I feel like I feel like I don't know. <laughs> Listen, I'm not an expert. OK, I yeah. do have a few friends in England. Like I did study abroad for a bit in Spain and I had there was a lot of English students there and they were from all over. Like there was a guy from like Liverpool. I couldn't even tell you or no Newcastle. I didn't understand him at all. Like, 
I just, we just called him Johnny Newcastle. Didn't know a word that came out of his mouth. Just agreed with it. Like, yeah, mate, whatever, whatever you want, <laughs> whatever sounds good to you. But I knew people from Liverpool. I knew people, I have a friend from Guilford. I have like just all over the place and their accents are all vastly different. Yeah. yeah. I think it's wild. I think it, it's it, great. It's mad because England's so small. Yeah, every county you got you got so many different accents and styles of um, talking. Like, there's Manchester and Liverpool yeah. aren't that far That's away from each other, but they sound so much they different, sound- you know. And then I don't know, like, please don't take this as an insult, sweet tea. Though I feel like you sound a lot like that girl georgia harrison i know you guys have mentioned her before <laughs> but i feel like you sound a lot like her when you talk just just your voice in general yeah i mean i've always been told i've had a little bit more of a manly voice for a girl so you know i don't think it's manly i feel like having like a deep voice doesn't make it manly i think yeah personally like when you think of when you, a girl tries to make a sexy voice what does she do she lowers Goes, the yeah, voice that's so true so i don't consider deeper voices manly although i do make the same joke about myself i feel like i have such a deep or like i feel like my voice sounds like an old person i feel like i sound like an old lady or something and i hate it <laughs> yeah um but i do like i feel like your accent and your voice are just really similar to her so whenever i hear you i always just imagine like you would look more like her you don't look like her you're <laughs> vastly prettier she looks like a oh. freak she's so plastic i can't even look at her face which, um which one is she is she the one with the whole bear scenario yeah yeah, yeah that's, that's her right has there been any updates with that bear got uh, out of she's... jail oh we got, yeah, out, of jail. got out of jail and she is doing like a documentary oh oh there you there you go Ooh, we'll that's a, yeah but like um emma stone is like a deep husky voice doesn't she yeah. yeah, Miley Cyrus has a really deep one. Yeah, super deep voice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. No, I don't. I don't. I don't equate it with like being like not ladylike. Mm. I, I think that voices are really nice to listen to a lot of the time. There was this character on The Sopranos. She, I don't remember her name, but she had this like really deep, like raspy voice for yeah. a woman. And my boyfriend always said, like, he loved her voice. It was so relaxing, so nice to listen to. So, yeah, it doesn't bother me. Like, honestly, <laughs> just, it, everyone's voice is different. I just think it's so fascinating. Yeah. Here's a um, here's a question for an American. What are your how what are your thoughts on the royal family? Are you a fan? Are you... Oh, uh, I'm scared because I don't know what your thoughts are. So I feel like, <laughs> I, OK, like, I feel like the idea is kind of like, the kardashians where they're just like famous they didn't really do anything yeah to get there (laughs) but like i feel like i like the queen she seems like a i don't know something about her just seems like she seems like a no bullshit lady but like something about her just seems really fun too yeah um she deserves all the praise she gets the queen she was and the way she became queen like when you like learn about her story and that like her brother had been like whatever exiled and like all this like stuff surrounding how she became queen and how old she was and how or young she was i should say it's it's i think it's absolutely wild and really impressive yeah. but when i think of um like the royal family in general i don't know like do you in is it it's not like in medieval times where you like worship the ground these people walk on right like i I don't think it's like that no i mean most of us like respect the um respect the queen and everything like that and um i mean we got like for example we got there's harry and Meghan, obviously which get a lot of for some reason a lot of people a lot of english people don't like harry and Meghan. i think it's because yeah. i don't know i think it's because they don't like Meghan because she's like some hollywood actress or something like that yeah because she was married beforehand and that's like frowned upon yeah well um, yeah is she also like do you think there's also like a racial thing there? i honestly i don't i don't think it's race at all i think it's just snobby british people and i think i think they think that she's marrying for some nefarious purpose like to get really rich i don't think they think she's marrying him to because think. she's in love yeah yeah but i, oh, I okay unless you're a really racist english person i think it's race but i think for the majority of people their dislike for her i don't think is racial at all um, okay that's think... good good to know yeah <laughs> but i mean the other who were the other who were the other two kate and um will <laughs> will everyone loves kate and will like... yeah they do oh they i, I watched the wedding i remember my mom like made me get up and watch it on tv <laughs> and i was like why are we watching this i mean she seems great Everybody like liked their story because she like had a poster of him on her wall in college yeah. or whatever. 
uh, or should I say uni? Um, I love English stuff. It's so much better. Everything in England is better. England, like, I honestly, I, how many Americans do you have listening to this show? Because I feel like I, I hate America. It's sometimes. about we have we have more Americans than we do um, British listeners. Yeah, only oh. by a little bit. But yeah, just uh, just out awesome. doing it. I take that back. Love America. <laughs> sure. But, um, I've just I've been to so many countries and I like them all so much better than here. And the people are like, then why don't you go there? And I'm like, you just can't do that. <laughs> the thing is, like, I feel that's the case with traveling because you, you see it how you want to see it. But if you were living in these countries that you think are better, you'd probably learn a lot like quickly that yeah. it's just not. Mm. Well, I did live very briefly, only for a few months for school in Spain. And oh, cool. um, it was really cool there. But I did know that like a lot of the youth was leaving Spain because there were literally no jobs there. Yeah. So I know that if I had tried to like live there sustainably for an extended period of time, it would probably be quite difficult. My uncle lives there. He loves it. Him and his wife have their kids there. Like everything Aww. grand and dandy. My mom and my stepdad have gone to visit them and they love it. They say it's so nice and relaxed there. I think Spain is like one of the most relaxing countries I've ever been to. Yes. Yeah. Um, there is hustle and bustle in the cities, but it's just so ch- even though even there it's like so chill. Yeah, yeah 100%. Al- although the Spanish don't like the English. Most they people. don't? No, it's because of Gibraltar, I think, is the main thing. Oh. Um, because um, obviously Gibraltar, which is detached to Spain, is owned by English. It is an English place, but like um, the Spanish want they want it back, and I think they don't like the English. I feel like back in the day, English colonizers were all about like taking, like, yeah. it wasn't there like you guys took parts of India? <laughs> We t- yeah, we colonized so many places. Like we went everywhere. We just like, wanted the land. Yeah. I don't know why the Spaniards are really complaining because they came and colonized like Mexico. So I don't yeah. know what they're so mad about. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if you did. You go to Gibraltar when you went to Spain? I did not. I've not been to like um, a lot of the extremities yeah. um, of Spain. It's so strange when you go to Gibraltar because you can just walk through the border from Spain to Gibraltar and it's really weird because everything is suddenly English but the landscape is Spanish. It's really oh. weird. So there'll be like red English telephone boxes and there'll be pubs <laughs> and, it, and, oh they'll, my God. and they'll like accept English money and it's weird but it's all just Spain and there's monkeys there. It's very strange. It's, it's quite interesting to go. That and is see. so cool. I yeah. actually didn't know that. That's really cool. Are there telephone boxes like everywhere in England? I really thought that was just like a gimmick in London just for the touristy effect. The, the red ones are um, you see in London all the time. In the UK, they used to be just sort of standard telephone boxes, but now they started to die out because of mobile phones and everything. But the red ones you still see a lot of the time in London and sometimes outside. Like I know in a town near me, Arundel, um, there is a red telephone box still there. But mostly yeah. they're a London gimmick, yeah. Yeah, I mean, we had telephone booths at some point. They're not red and cute like those, yeah. so they didn't really stick around for the tourist factor. But yeah. you can every once in a while, like I think you can, I don't know if they still have them anywhere, but every once in a while you can find like an old phone somewhere, like on a wall in a restaurant or at a mall or something where you yeah. would use them. Uh, when I was a kid, I, that's when the transition was kind of happening. So I did use the phones like every once in a while. They were disgusting. <laughs> um, and, but I eventually got a phone and I there was definitely no longer a need. Yeah, exactly. I don't think. Uh, yeah, I, I can't think of the last time I needed to use a, a phone box. I wanted to get on to Courting with James because I've got at least one juicy story that we can get to and I thought we'd get all of our opinion on. Yeah, let's do it. Okay, so the um, the story here is we've got a, gran, a grandma of six who's 44 and she ran off with her pregnant daughter's husband. This is so fucked up. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Like grandma, like was in love with her. Forty-four-year-old grandma ran off with her pregnant daughter's husband. She's ran off, and they've started a relationship. Forty-four-year-old grandma. That just sounds. How old is the 
child um i let's mm. try and find out um, i do not want to be a grandma at 44 when my mom was 44 i was 16 24 <laughs> 24 is how old the daughter is so she oh, okay. had her at 20 yeah so i'm guessing he's like around the same age then um yeah i believe he is around exactly the same age and apparently she was flirting with them while they were pregnant the husband and the grandma have now run off and left the pregnant oh well she's had the baby now just her and the baby oh my god and <laughs> also the dad that her dad they were still together and so he's heartbroken as well because she's obviously left the dad that is so messed up. Yeah. Um, apparently, she said, the, the grandma said, these things happen when asked about the scandal. <laughs> do, well, do they? Yeah. <laughs> they just happen. So, I uh, mean, I've never heard of it happening before. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh. The, um, the girl called Jess claimed that her partner, Ryan, broke up with her via text hours after she had given birth. Ouch. Yeah. Nice. Oh, my nice. God. Classy with text. Yeah. When conf- why why would he want to be with his mu- her mum? I don't get that. Well, her grandma. I don't know because I've I've there's pictures of them and the daughter doesn't look that bad. Wait, wait, wait. It's her <laughs> It's her grandma? It's her or- mom. Yeah. Oh, it's her mum. It's yeah. her mom. She's a grandma because she had the the yes. grandma oh, baby. Oh, I see. Baby. Yeah. Okay, that because that was throwing me off. I was like her <laughs> grandma. Oh right, yeah. Okay, <laughs> makes That's sense. Wild, but still, why? Yeah. yeah. Just why? So she, yes. Yeah, so mom? she's dating her granddaughter or grandson's dad. dad. Yes. Yeah. Oh my oh. god! Apparently, Ryan, the boyfriend, said, "I don't care what everyone thinks. I'm in love with Georgina, the grandma, and I don't care who knows about it." Okay, you know what? You're proud. I get it. This just is like screaming "Sweet Home Alabama." To it me. is. Yeah, I don't yeah, know. Yeah. I feel like you need to cue this song up. Do you... Like I just. <laughs> One of my favorite TikTok trends. Have you seen there's a guy that whenever he sees weird sort of stuff like this, he just cues himself playing Sweet I'm Alabama on the ukulele. I <laughs> haven't seen it, but that's perfect. It's so very funny. apropos for this moment. It is, I'm, yeah. I just can't imagine, like, my boyfriend and my mother, like, I don't know, man. It's so weird. Yeah, I, I, how would you deal with that situation? Like, how could you come back from that? what you can't you you're at that point you know you're a single mom like you're done with that yeah you're not yeah. even gonna try again are you yeah. i don't know i wouldn't yeah i sh- would not i probably never trust a human being again in my life but no yeah. and apparently they mo- they moved in with georgina the nan to help with the pregnancy and with childcare during like covid and so instead of helping her out she's just shacked up with the husband and fucked off all right so that's bloody great and um she, oh, so no. that's crap so now also georgina the grandma did have a husband their dad they were still together so now he's distraught as well because he's now lost a wife and yeah so is... is there like an ulterior motive here is there like a reason them two have gotten together or is it just purely selfishness because yes. it can't like it can't be love can it i don't know yeah. and also the dad, so um, the baby that's now been born, the dad that's run off, the yeah. husband, um, he's not visited the baby since she was born. Apparently, the dad of two quickly visited Reuben on the day he was born and then again the day after to pack up his belongings and then left. Oh the baby's name God. is Reuben? Reuben is the little baby's name, yeah. Oh, like the sandwich? There's, there's <laughs> the a, sandwich? What's a Reuben sandwich? Oh, I don't know what it. I'm gonna look it up. I don't remember what kind of sandwich it is. Reuben. I've never heard of that. <laughs> Reuben yeah, sandwich. Here it is. Hold on. It is um, an American. Okay, there you go. <laughs> that explains it. An American grilled cheese sandwich composed of corned beef, Swiss cheese, sauerkraut, and Russian dressing. Ugh, what? No, thank you. Yeah, you're right. And it's on rye bread. Um, with a kosher, uh, it's associated with kosher style delicatessens, but it's obviously not kosher because mm. it combines meat and cheese. That, that nice. is very Pacific. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's how we do things here in America. We don't have <laughs> original ideas, so we throw like one thing from every European con- country into and one. into one sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> so the w- thing that I don't get right when you, I come to stories like these is there are so many people in the world. If you're a mother to a daughter that you're supposed to love 
could you not think, even if you're someone you're like, I want to have an affair with my husband, I'll find someone else. <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, we're, we're talking toxic relationships. Yeah. Does it get yeah. more toxic than that? that is, I don't yeah, know. She's lost her mother and her husband in a space of a day. Yep. That is fucked, isn't it? It sucks. I, I wonder if she... It doesn't say in the article, but I wonder if she's still staying with the dad, with the um, the grandma's husband, her dad. Yeah, I hope so. They need to like be there for each other yeah. now. I feel like if this were a movie or something, the daughter and the dad would be like, crime fighters from there <laughs> then on and they would like um hunt down people who abandon their families and that would be like their whole mo yes <laughs> <laughs> apparently um m- much of the wider family have disowned the grandma and the husband well yeah, i don't to be expected. Yeah. yeah, it's not going to achieve anything, though, is it? They're not going to turn around and be like, oh, okay, well, let's get back together with our original partners. <laughs> no, but that's what relationships are like in England. So that's a yeah. nice little snapshot yeah, apparently. <laughs> what, are they? Is that yeah. what I mean? <laughs> Oh uh, yeah, me and James have done that all the time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you guys, yeah, you guys just run off, fuck off with each other's parents or whatever. That's yeah. fine. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> Going off of toxic relationships, um, how long have you been with your current um, boyfriend? We have been together for a little over three years, like three and a half. Oh, you're beating us. Yeah. But... How long have you guys been together? Almost. It will be two years in July, won't it? Yeah. That's so nice. Yeah. I'm just think I was actually talking about this yesterday because there was a a point where I thought I was a sex addict in my like I thought I had a problem. Right. And because I was always like wanting it but getting bored with my long-term partners. Okay. And I thought that that was like a problem. So I thought it was me. Like I thought yeah. it was just like I I'm addicted like I whatever. So with my ex-boyfriend, I actually, my ex and I broke up like two months before I met my current boyfriend. Yeah. Um, it wasn't planned, obviously. Like I didn't know I was going to meet him two months later. But with him, it was like really intense the beginning with my ex. And it was like crazy. And then literally, I would say within two months, I was bored. The sex was blah. It was and then eventually we stopped having it all together. Right. But I but I guess I because I had never really been in like a good relationship, I thought that was normal. Like I thought you get bored after the first couple of months and then you just live with each other and then you like make jokes about how much you hate your significant other for the rest of your life. Like I thought that <laughs> I thought that's just how it was done and anybody yeah. who's happy yeah. on social media is lying. Like I just <laughs> thought that for so long. I mean, uh, they do try and portray it that way in most movies to be fair. Yeah. Yeah, I just I really thought that was it. Like you're bored after that and you don't get to live your happily ever after like such a thing doesn't exist. Until I met my current boyfriend and we never got bored of each other. Like we are best friends. We laugh every single day. Is it perfect? Like every single moment? No, like we Mm. fight a little bit, whatever. But he, at the end of the day, he is my best friend in the world and I have not stopped having fun and we still have amazing sex three years later. So I don't think, I didn't know it was humanly possible. Yeah. Yeah. So I thought there was something was wrong with me. I took a test to find out if I was in fact a sex, I'm not, okay. but I, I took a test. I was like, maybe it's like, maybe I have a problem. I don't know. <laughs> but from what I've learned is people with sex addictions really like cannot be even faithful to their partners, not because they don't want to be, but because yeah. like they can't They're if they're not with them, they want to be doing it with something, somebody like anybody, yeah, they'll, yeah. they'll pay for it if they have to. Wow. Um, and that goes for men and women. So like, I just, I'm, I'm not that good, bro. I've never been, I've never yeah. wanted it that bad. <laughs> <laughs> that's super honest though. But yeah, I mean, damn, that's yeah. like. That's good. Yeah. That sounds nice. That's and really strong. good. No, that is really good. That it's now worked out well. Mm. Yeah. Better results for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just, just watch out for your grandma. Oh, my grandma's <laughs> a dime piece too. I better watch <laughs> out. <laughs> Christ. Well, we're um, we're coming towards the end of the podcast now, so we just want to uh, make sure everyone checks out your show, which is Quips and Dips. Um, and it, what platforms is it on? I've it, I listen to it on Spotify. Yeah, but... I I don't even know all the platforms that it's on because Anchor is <laughs> really bad at telling you. 
I didn't even know I was on Apple Podcasts till I went to Anchor to check my analytics. And it's like, <laughs> oh, you get most of your listens from Apple Podcasts. Wow. Wow. I was like, wow, oh, interesting, because Anchor never told me that. And it's yeah. not even listed in my Anchor, like in my RSS feed or whatever. Like it's not listed anywhere for me to share the link. I had to go get it from Apple Podcasts myself. But anyway, yeah. it is on Apple Podcasts. It is on Spotify. It's on Google Podcasts. It's on most of the like major platforms, I would say. Nice. Yeah. So wherever you want to listen. Perfect. And what um days or how often do you release episodes? I release um every week on Fridays. Uh, I'm gonna try starting to put out a few like smaller bonus episodes for fun because I've been having some fun ideas that I can't stretch out. My episodes are short though since I am a lone host. So they're yeah. only half an hour. So it's a nice, nice quick, like drive to work kind of a thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, and if I have a guest, typically it goes a full hour. Um, but yeah, every single Friday you'll find my show. Perfect. Okay. Well, thank you so much for coming on. We really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Um, I, yeah. And I hope you had a good time. I did. Good. Good. That's, <laughs> That's great. great. Yeah. It was so fun. And I learned a lot so about New Jersey. Yeah. <laughs> it's a magical place. <laughs> well, um, <laughs> If everyone wants to check out the Quips and Dips podcast on Spotify and Apple Podcasts, um, thank you so much again for coming on, the mystery host, and um, we will see everybody again next week. Bye. Bye.